laws you will obey. Right. Yes. If you're a corporation and you hire and serve the yeah. general public, you shouldn't get to pick and choose what laws you're going to follow. And the decision, again, it's a woman's personal decision, yes. and it doesn't belong. And it's, it's made, you know, decisions about birth control, family planning, these are decisions that are made by a woman mm -hmm. with her family and her faith. And, you right. know, and, and it's, it's, right. they, it's the way it's they should be made. It's not respecting her decision making and her faith, exactly. Right. You know, let, let's talk, uh, there was another Supreme Court decision that uh, affected uh, access to uh, clinics, birth control clinics. And I, I forget the name, it was in Massachusetts. It's a Massachusetts case. It's called McCullen versus Coakley. And in that case, a unanimous Supreme Court struck down a 35-foot uh, fixed buffer zone around facilities that provide abortions in Massachusetts. And the state law there was passed actually um, at following years and years of harassment and, uh, in fact, where two people who worked in um, health centers that provided abortions were murdered. murdered yeah. So, I mean, very, um, you know, escalating violence in the state of Massachusetts. And so, certainly, that was the best solution the legislature felt to address the decision. And what the court did was they struck down that 35-foot fixed buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Um, there are other kinds of clinic access laws uh, in the country, state and municipal laws. Here in New York, we have state and municipal mm -hmm. um, clinic access protections. In New York City, there is a buffer zone, buffer zone law that um, basically prohibits you from following, intimidating, or harassing someone who is within 15 feet of a reproductive health center. That law is valid. McCullen versus Coakley did not strike down every all buffer, laws. All buffer zone laws. And um, in fact, Attorney General Schneiderman came out on July 10th with a letter to police that said New York's clinic access laws are val valid. They are to be upheld and we are to enforce them. And you know, we were very delighted to have the attorney general come out yes. strong and He's say a stand -up guy. He really we're going to yeah. enforce these laws and you know for us our patients safety is and our staff safety is always our first concern and we're always going to do what we can to keep our patients safe and you know it, with protesters outside of health centers it is intimidating yes. patients do feel harassed well uh, from what I've seen and read over the years, th there's there's an attempt to harass and an, an attempt to intimidate. You know, not I'm sure not all protesters, and I and I'm not saying people don't have the right to protest. People do have the right to protest, mm -hmm. and I believe in that. But you know, you don't get in somebody's face and scream in somebody's face. You know, you, you, you don't you know uh, say unkind things and stuff like that to, because you know somebody could you know whether they're coming in for an abortion or coming in for a checkup. You know, it, that's that's their their health decision. Well, and it goes again back to personal decision making. And you know, I know the the plaintiffs uh, in the McCullen case. They really position themselves as sidewalk counselors. Well, whether you're a sidewalk counselor or claim to be a sidewalk counselor, or whether you're standing there with some of the ugly and hateful signs that our patients and our staff are faced with every day, as a patient, a woman has a right to come and make those decisions, personal decisions, with her doctor. Not a sidewalk counselor. Not a sidewalk <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. counselor. And free from intimidation and harassment. And I, I think that, you know, yes, a First Amendment right to free speech, but again, 35 feet is not far. And if you were outside of any of those Health, any one of our health centers on a day where there's protesters or outside of the health centers in Boston and could saw those protesters, you would realize that that 35 feet, while that's a little breathing room and mm -hmm. comfort for a patient, it is still intimidating and it is still harassing. Sure. And they are still fearful. 90% of abortion providers say that patients come in and express concern or their loved their one that safety. is with them expresses concern for their safety. And, and I, I don't know if this is happening around here, but I've read in other parts of the country where doctors who come in to perform services are wearing bulletproof vests. Certainly true here. It's true. It's here. certainly uh, true uh, here in New York. I mean, uh, that, that's, you know, 
th then we've gone beyond the pale. You know, we've gone beyond you know civilized society, and you know, and you, you can be against something, and you can work to see your point of view turned into law. But when you, you know when you when you're actually trying to intimidate and kill people and hurt people, and you know, it, it, that that's why we require laws. You know, what's interesting about the Supreme Court is that the Supreme Court has a 250 foot buffer zone around it. <laughs> you can't protest anywhere within 250 feet of the Supreme Court. It, it, and it's yeah. funny because, you know, that's one of the comments you see over and over again on social media is from the comfort of their buffer yeah, zone, exactly. the Supreme Court struck down. Yeah. And, you know, and their buffer zone is much bigger. And, you know, the, the 35 feet, it, it's, it's such a disappointment. Again, it really overlooks the needs of women but and their doctors. I mean, our, you know, for our staff and our patients to have to yeah. face that every day. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. It certainly is. And it's certainly a lot of stress on someone coming in for health care services. Yes, who's, who, especially if they, you know, they, they, you know, they were already stressed from, you know, whatever, they're not feeling well or, you know, it's, you know. But, you know, it, it, unfortunately, sometimes it seems in America these days, you know, the, the angrier people get all the attention. You know what I mean? And, and you know, the, the more you scream, you'll get on TV. You know, the, 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 you know, and it's just unfortunate because you can't really have a discussion. You can't really have a debate when the other person's screaming at you. And you're screaming back. It just, it and I think that, you know, certainly we see that there are some very loud voices against abortion and against birth control. But overwhelmingly, I think Americans do support a woman's right to make her decisions yes. free from government interference. Because again, when we're talking about these kinds of restrictions on women, on their access to birth control, on their access to abortion, we are talking about government and politicians making decisions that women and their families should be making together and really coming down into mm -hmm. family decision making. And I think the vast majority of people, when you really say to them, but isn't this a personal decision that a woman should make with her faith and her family and do what she needs right. with the best. Most people agree with that. Sure. They support that. Um, but yeah, it's the loud voices that it, get it, on TV it, and social media. So, some of the people who you know, voice their you know, disdain for government are the first people to say, well, government should be you know, stopping that from happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. You can't have your cake and eat it. Well, I guess you can, <laughs> but you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have your cake and eat it, too. You know, it, it, it's... It's also disconcerting where, you know, a, a lot of the folks who are, you know, for their uh, heartfelt belief in, uh, you know, being anti-abortion are also anti-birth control. And, and it, that, you know, it just, it never made sense to me. You know. It is, you know, um, it's, and respecting that position that, that some people have deeply held religious beliefs. And, and, I, and uh, that I, I'm, I'm related to a lot of those people, and I understand it. <laughs> so why? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, you know, we do respect that, and I think, you know, just as no one would, would go the opposite direction, no one would be trying to enf enforce or impose a requirement on someone who doesn't believe in birth control to use it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, it, so it's, it's really challenging when when you see so many people trying to get up, get politicians in particular to make those decisions for women and their families. You know, we don't invite our U.S. senator to the right. table to talk about birth control with us. Exactly. You know, the, the, like the whole uh, one of the most amazing things in the past few years is where the country has gone on gay marriage. From you know in, in the '90s, you know the Defense of Marriage Act gets passed, and now you know it, it, that just looks so archaic now. And, and, and the idea that you know, you wouldn't allow you know uh, people who love each other to form a life together just seems insane now. So hopefully, you know things can change. You know, I mean, the old thing is you know if, you, if you're against gay marriage, okay, don't get married to a gay, to a gay person. Well, yeah. right. And if you're against birth control, don't use don't it. Don't use um, it. Exactly. You know, it is kind of a it, it, it is a very simple concept. Yes. You know, your personal decision making, your personal health care, those are decisions that should belong to you. And especially when those actions harm no one else. Right. You know what I mean? That, 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 you know, it, you, you, there's always an argument in, in society when your actions, you know, detrimentally affect somebody else. But when it's all personal, it's all your decisions, you know, 
if that's just really government overreach. You know, they, you know it, it's amazing because we talk about government overreach and it's always, it always comes down to, you know, when, when the people who talk about government overreach, when you get down to what they're talking about, it, it gets down to they don't want to pay any more taxes. And so that, that, so the paying for stuff is government overreach, but, you know, being in your life and controlling the, the minutia of your decisions, that's, you know, the government's proper place. What, what uh, we only have a few minutes left, but it, what, what uh, are, are the challenges and the, uh, the uh, hopes for Planned Parenthood in this area? What, 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 what do you need? What would you like to see happen? Well, so Where could folks donate? There, well, there, that's a great thing for us. Uh, Certainly, are on our website, uh, www.pphp.org, there is a donate button, and you can even uh, select to have your donation completely used locally, or to um, to have it sent to the area where there's the most need. There is a lot of need here in Westchester. I am going to say that there's a lot of need in all four counties that we serve. Um, certainly, also to follow us on Facebook if you really want to learn about these issues and the kind of advocacy we're doing, you can follow us on our Facebook page at Planned Parenthood Hudson Peconic. And I did want to say that, you know, Planned Parenthood has set up and I have a number that people can text. So because now after Hobby Lobby, a lot of people have questions about their birth control and their access to it. And so we've set up a helpline to help women whose employers have now denied them birth control. And if people text the words birth control to 69866 to report a denial of coverage. 69866. Yep, 69866. You text birth control to report a dial, denial, denial of, of coverage, coverage or get help accessing birth control. So that's one of the things we started up since Hobby Lobby. Great. That, that is, uh, you, know, that, you know, it's amazing how, you know, technology now allows you to reach more people and to organize quicker. Yes. Um, your clinics are open seven days a week, or we're uh, our hours vary. Our hours are posted on our website okay. www.pphp.org, and we have an eight hundred number two three zero plan where that you can call to schedule an appointment. But we also provide services to walk ins. Okay, so if somebody has an issue and they need immediate attention, they can yeah. just come by. Okay, you know what? I, I I really appreciate you coming here. Uh, we, we we have to wrap it up in a minute, but uh, you know, hopefully. This show will, you know, spark people's interest in helping Planned Parenthood provide these services that are so essential and to also talk to your elected officials and your friends about how important it is to make individual decisions uh, left to individuals and not to corporations. Because I think the future in America is going to be the battle against, you know, those uh, common people and corporate interests. And, and if people don't start seeing the nexus between what's going on here and the way things have gone in the past, you know, 20, 30 years and how corporations have become all powerful, we're really going to be in, prob you know, in, in trouble. If corporations are going to be people, they should be taxed at the same rate I'm taxed at. You know, it, it, but then you'll see, a, 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 oh, no, no, we're not people now. We are, <laughs> only when we want to take away your rights. But I, I really appreciate you coming here. Thank you so much and for having me. And if there's me. anything I could ever do, let Great. me know. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.